Hey, everybody. Uh, it is Mr. Justin Armenta from JA Digitizing Studios. We have Matt Anderley from Patch Race, and I am Jeff Fuller from Fuller and Brody Works. And today we are here on the Needle Bar with a part two. So if you watched last week and were very curious as to how it concluded, it didn't. It's going to conclude now. <laughs> <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, the fancy tumbler. Product placement. I got mine too. Sponsored by. <laughs> it's expired. Don't worry. It can't hurt me. My metal pen. Puff Pro Tools. So, That's a um, topic. I'm going to throw some stuff around. I, I give up. So, uh, in the comments, we have. Bob from South Carolina, and I dropped my puff pro on the ground. It's going to drive me nuts because I don't know where it went, and it's going to drive me nuts. Um, but we were working on. Well, Justin was do, doing a stock design last week. Was it a stock design or was it a patch design? It was a patch design, correct? It was a patch design for that guy. Patch design for Don Don Don. There Reaper, we go. Skippo. <laughs> so. You got, I want to say you got about halfway through it ish. Around there somewhere. Yeah. There'll be a part three. There will be a part five. three and a four. I think part three is sewing it out. Maybe. Should we go. do that? I, I, I think that that should be a most definite part three. But we're going to pull up Justin's screen here where he's got Mr. Kangaroo um, with hot sauce. Hot sauce and a black rubber ducky in his pocket. Is that that's? Oh, I'm glad that's a rubber duck in his pocket, and <laughs> you're just not excited to see you. <laughs> We're gonna get blocked on YouTube for eight seconds. That is most definitely not what that is, but oh well. <laughs> Matt's like, let me look at my patch on the wall, and I'll tell you what it is. I sent you the the other artwork for what that is. I don't know if you have that in the your will. I have this guy. Oh. oh, it's the dead bird. Yeah, the, the, the tired and weary 343rd Raven, my old squadron. And then this is a tomahawk or something? Yeah. Tomahawk. I thought it was hot sauce. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Matt. So as the digitizer, I know what direction you want to go. Because ultimately, my end user or my customer or the end user are going to make the decisions like this. So I see quite a bit of different colors in this kangaroo. What would your ideal way of simplifying this that you don't have a, a, bill, a bajillion color changes and a bunch of small stitches that aren't needed? So I'm, I'm seeing at least three, if not four different browns and tans in there with shading and highlights. Glasses are at least two colors, and of course the black detail and the red tomahawk. I don't know about you, Jeff, but I only see two tans there, and the glasses are definitely one shade. I mean, <laughs> if you if you really want my opinion, it's black and white the whole thing. <laughs> two colors, black and white. Black and white. Now, I. I don't have the color depth that a lot of people do, uh, and I'm not afraid to admit it. So I, I see maybe three shades of tan. And... So the main ones are, of course, this kind of medium tan body. You got your uh -huh. white, you got your white or lighter in the bottom of the face, down his chest and his ears. And you do have some shading, like in the tail, back behind here, maybe up in his ear up here. So I would say at least three that is possible to try to duplicate what I'm saying here. I got you. I would do two tans. That's me personally. I I just figured the the same way that you did the the faces and um I guess you know I should probably pull up my, my screen. Let me the faces it. on those other ones. Uh Sure. If it's a giant yellow yellow smiley face, I'm gonna be so happy. You have no idea. That's how I a did nice, my yellow smiley face. A nice flat smiley face. Yep. We we all know that that's my that's my jam. Like the same way that you taught me how to do this, I figured you just do that little shading thing. 
Gotcha. The, the little shading thing. Now, yeah. is, that, is that in a second color? No, this is the same color. Just, okay. So just a, just a, a different, um, yeah, it's like density a density at a different a angle. Point 0.8 or something, 0.85, and a longer stitch length. Okay. And I believe no underlay because that would look weird. Right. Yep. Gotcha. I don't okay. know. I got the settings from you. So we can, we can definitely go that route. So now that I have the instruction. So when. So wait, now I have a question, Justin. If I, if I just submitted this to you, would you have sent me an email and said, what color do you want? On this one, I would have done two colors. I, I think if it was if it was a new customer, I'd maybe ask it a little bit more in depth. Um, but the size this is, and more than likely the customers get to defer to what I think is going to work best. And to me, the time, the effort, the little bit of stitches that's going to give you this little shading in, let's see, how big of an area. From tip to tip is still under two inches, just over two inches tall. So in that small of an area, there's really no point in, in adding that these little stitches in here. So I would do it in two without if I wasn't asking. Got you. All right, guys. And what about his glasses, Matt? <clears throat> Uh, I still see one color. <laughs> one color. Um, what what I was thinking is, again, the shading thing. So a solid tatami, just flat, and then on the the orangish part, uh -huh. you can do the the fading. Uh, gotcha. Do like a the point, uh, or the one point two fill or whatever. So you do it in three stages. I don't know. Okay. okay. Like the lead yeah. Aricelli blending way, but you just don't do the third one. Gotcha. All right. That, that you like that. It. Nope. I'm producing that horribly. Sense. That makes sense. All right. So typically when I approach something that I know is going to be a running stitch detail, which if I measure here, let me switch to millimeters yeah this is this is under a millimeter wide in a lot of areas it does kind of taper off in areas but uh, the majority of this detail I can tell is is going to be under a millimeter wide so I'm going to go ahead and um, and know that I'm going to do a running stitch detail on the on the kangaroo uh, typically what I like doing is doing the detail first and that way when I'm digitizing the rest of the kangaroo, um, I am not going by the artwork. I'm going to actually go by my outline because if there's any adjustments that I need to make with the outline, I'm going to do that now while I'm digitizing the, the outline. And then that way, the rest of the, the elements in the kangaroo, I'm going to use my lines that I've, if and when I adjust them. So. So I will get into it. Uh, you're muted. Yes, that's because I muted it. So if you guys want to know what's going on, why we're giggling so much, you should probably sign up for Discord. Uh, we do have a Discord channel. It is embnerd.com forward slash Discord. Right, Matt? Yep. And you can sign up for the Discord and see all the fun things. But <clears throat> in the side note from there, we've still we've got Bob Beeb now joining us from Facebook, still from South Carolina. We have Mr. Frank Dunn from the UK. We have Antonio from the Bronx, New York. We have Don here checking in from Levittown, Pennsylvania. Uh, we have Mark Salta from Japan. And we have Barb joining us from Central Minnesota. And Lyndon from North Carolina watching. And Matt asked a question in the comments, have you made patches before? So if you guys want to go ahead and drop your comments in the comment section, that'd be great. If you do have questions during throughout the process, make sure you drop them in the uh, the comments, and we'll make sure to bring them up. Okay, I'm done with my spiel now. Are you, oh, you going to answer the question, Jeff? Have you ever made patches before? A couple. Just a couple. A couple thousand. <laughs> a couple thousand. 
I think I'm the same. So one thing that I do when I'm typically when you're using a running stitch outline, um, you're going to want to do at least two passes of that stitch to to kind of make it bold enough to work as an outline. So what I try to do is since I know um, let's end it there. What I try to do is knowing that if I start here, I'm going to have to work my way around this design and work my way back to that starting point. So there's two passes. Um, one, one function as far as branching, like I could do all these little individual pieces together and branching will group them where you can choose a start and end point and you can start, the, you can choose the same point. But I've found that the computers actually get a path it and the, 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 what it thinks is the least amount of travel stitches. And sometimes it may go over uh, one particular area too many times. So you really can't control that, especially when, when you're seeing a lot of, of, of areas where it's branching off the same line. So typically I will, I will try to choose a path around the design, which is usually the outer line of the detail and know that that's going to be kind of my travel stitch. And then I'll come back in and, and do elements as I'm passing them. So I know I'm kind of coming into the object, coming back out of the object, and that's two passes on that line. And then I'm using that outline as I know is where I'm going to travel back to where I'm, where I started, if that makes any sense. It does to me. I concur. So now I have a question, Justin, because inevitably with that run stitch outline that you're throwing down, you're going to end up into a parallel with fill. So in the same direction that your fill stitches are running, is there anything that you do when you run into the parallel of those stitches in order to help that stand up and out and not get buried? Uh, do my best to avoid that. If I know, if I know that there's an area, especially a larger area where I can't avoid it for any reason, then I'll actually do more passes than just the two. If I know it's going to be running parallel with that, with that fill, and that way, you know, it gives it a quite a bit of stitches to get that loft. Okay. So as you can see, all these interior lines going back. You know, up and back is giving me the two passes in that travel on the outside of the kangaroo, come back in to the interior. Oh, I see the bird now. Now you see the bird, huh? <laughs> now I see the bird. Are you going to try to get capture that little bit of red in his lower eye or just admit it because it's such a small detail? <laughs> yeah, that ain't going to happen. Oh, it has to though. It has to, huh? Yeah, it's it's called using one of these suckers. This little dot at the very end. Yeah, just a little boop. Sound effect included. Sound effect endorsed. And another thing I do when there are elements throughout the, the design that are going to be satins with that I want to include into the same color, color change as my, as my outline I'm, I'm digitizing. I will kind of, I purposely start and stopped right over here so I can end with doing the satin nose. Um, the other satin that I see that I'm going to have to do is this bird. So I actually ran my, my running stitches through that bird knowing that I'm going to have to come back up to this part of the face and come back down. And once I come back down here uh, to the to the bird, I'll do those satins and then I'll continue running. As you guys keep on messaging on Discord. In the discussion. So if you want to know what me and Matt grinned about, go into the discussion on Discord. Join the Discord server, emvener.com forward slash Discord. 
behind the scenes footage or look. So is it so is it you just you guys or are you taking it to a no it, it's a public it's in page. The, it's in the discussion. Gotcha. I'm gonna grab a few comments though. Well, since we've we've got this nice break going on. Um we have Eric watching from Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's made a few patches. Uh, this one made me grin right here. Mark Basalda, I made patches before I went to bed last night and before breakfast today. <laughs> that one got me. Um, Michael Downey saying hello from Canada. And we have Eric Campbell. I digitized similarly, similarly in tours. Um, and Don says, I've been trying patches, but not having much luck. So I caught up on the comments. I feel better now. So uh, I'm going to bring up my screen for a little bit. I'm going to steal the thunder. I was going to say, Sorry. wait, does he have a super clear vector? <laughs> I do. <laughs> so I just thought of this. I'm like, you know what? I wonder if there's an AI powered online image enhancer. What? It just gets rid of noise, though, but it makes the bird and the hot sauce even worse. But the so we the hot sauce. It's hot sauce. Well, uh, I'm just They're going to get their patch back. Why is this guy carrying hot sauce and not a tomahawk? <laughs> but I don't know. I just thought that was kind of cool. But it still doesn't help. It's not a vector anyways. But And if I zoom in, yeah, it's... But okay, we'll go back to uh, full screen Jeff because <laughs> that's who we want to see with full screen Jeff. I don't think we want to see that. So, no. <laughs> all right, we're back to Justin's screen. Great. All right, so now that I've uh, are we back? Yes. It's weird. I'm I'm seeing kind of a blank screen, but okay. As long as you can there, see it. There's a puppy visiting. So now that I've traveled through and around the kangaroo and getting all the interior parts, coming back down, getting the black part of the bird in its pocket, and all I need to do now is travel back to my starting point, going to the outside of the kangaroo, and not worrying about any of the interior details because I've already hit those. I'm going to go back and fix that tail in a minute. It's all wonky. And of course, Jeff, I'm not paying attention to the uh, StreamYard screen, so let me know if there's any questions. So I'm yep, going to bring, bring up something that I think is interesting. Uh, so Eric changed his profile picture on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know why. I noticed it. So uh, Eric, I want, like, I realized you changed your profile picture first. <laughs> Even if I wasn't, I'm saying I won. If you say so. If you say so, Matthew. And then Suzanne says, cute pup. Yeah, that's not my puppy. That was my brother-in-law's puppy. And they're moving to Hill Air Force Base in Utah. Jeff knows where that is. I do, actually. It's uh, They have an excellent museum there. I highly recommend their can of food day when you go. So can they of food day? For a little bit. Yeah, it's a food drive where they open up the cockpits of a bunch of planes and they let you actually sit in them if you bring a can of food. It's totally worth the price of admission. Gotcha. All right, so now that I have my outline done, I know that and there wasn't too many uh, adjustments that I had to make. You know, if, if there was a lot of fine detail and a lot of fine lines that weren't going to work for embroidery, I would have, you know, adjusted, eliminated as I'm doing this. Uh, digitizing the outline 
but like I said, I, I try to establish my outline first and then I, I'll digitize the interior uh, elements to my outline and not the, the artwork. I did use the, the little frame of the glasses is pretty thin. So I just went ahead and just used the, the outline as part of those, the ear, the ear piece of the glasses since it's, it's going to be too small for a satin stitch with a with detail border on it. So discussing the colors, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with two colors on this mat just because there is a lot of that light color. And that, that technique that you're showing me with the face, that was such a small area to kind of use that. It's, it's to utilize a little bit of the different stitch angle and, and stitch density in a small area. Uh, so you're not just putting 10 stitches in a second color, but I think there's a good amount of the, of the tan of the kangaroo that justifies it, if that's okay with you. Yep. Works for me. All right. So looking at the kangaroo, especially something that's a little bit more realistic, um, I'm going to try to layer it in elements that I know that are from behind all the way up to the front. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the, the kangaroo's tail. contrasting color here so I can see it. You guys, I can't take you anywhere. You can. <laughs> my, uh, my son's beagle is licking my foot. It's not pleasant. You said he's licking your foot? Yeah, the beagle's licking my foot. Okay, uh, so a couple comments. Uh, Eric says, I get the prize. We don't know what it is, but uh, I get a prize. Uh, hopefully it's not dog poop in a trash bag. Okay, <laughs> with that. I mean, there you go. <laughs> then Barb. Uh, from Minnesota says, sounds like a fly in breakfast at our local airport. Buy breakfast and a ticket for a ride in a small plane. Proceeds go to search and rescue. Pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So, Justin, when you're doing those travel runs, do you typically um, do corner nodes and not curved nodes? Because I noticed you kind of went corner all the way, which generates a hard point that the it forces the stitch to drop there. Does a curve not? A curve, uh, it generates it according to the minimum and the maximum stitch length. Oh, well, typically I'm, I'm plotting points that are quite a bit of distance to each other anyway. So there's a, a needle drop there. It's not going to make much of a difference depending on the stitch length. I just wondered if it was probably something left over from back in the day on the wing software. I think it's part of that, yeah. You've only been doing this, what, 20-something years? Yeah. And, yeah, I would say, what, two years of it on Wacom? Has it been two already? Almost. That means it's paid off. Time to buy more add-ons. They're on sale. They're usually <laughs> always on sale, it seems like. Why don't you do a commercial there, Jeff, for your BFF? If you haven't joined the Discord channel, please join the Discord channel. It is ianbeaner.com forward slash Discord. Uh, Justin Armenta and Matthew Enderly, as well as myself and Mr. Adam Ford, BJJHats.com, will be live at Applicate Getaway here in Texas. Um, if you want to go and find out all about everything that we're up to go ahead and drop down to uh the links list that's right there links.embnerd.com you'll be able to find links to all the fun things that we are doing as well as if you are not in the embroidery nerd group please make sure you join request to join the embroidery nerd group uh, make sure that you answer all three questions if you don't answer or four questions make sure you answer all the questions if you don't answer all all the questions you will likely be declined 
um, but you won't be blocked, so you can go ahead and reapply to get back in and just make sure you answer all those questions. And now back to you, Justin. Oh, other side. Hey, Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I like it. You gotta talk fast like all those disclaimers. I'm working on my commercial voice. You know, I did that live with Christine that I maybe drank way too much energy drink. Um, yes, I remember that. And I was I was rolling into my commercial voice. And so we're gonna try the commercial voice. Next up, it'll be like sponsored by 3D Puff Pro for all your 3D Puff needs. <laughs> Why is it always 3D Puff Pro that's sponsoring you? Um, it's your tool. <laughs> it's, it's an easy one. I like I, mine. Could, I could just say, make sure you type hashtag ask me about Justin's tool. <laughs> or ask Justin about his tool, but you know. I'm so glad Nikki put that on the banner too. <laughs> Asked about Justin's tool. Did she really? I don't know about that. I honestly don't know. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't put it past Matt to have her do that. I honestly didn't even think of it until now, but uh Oh man, shucks. Yeah, it could shucks. be it could totally be a vinyl sticker. Hey, All right, so I'm gonna grab a couple of comments, Justin. Um Eric says I often use corner nodes on purpose on super small detail because I'm literally punching individual needle drops. Uh, if I want a more curved line, I'll offset the drops on the second pass of the straight stitches around tight curves, reduces the look of corners, and reduce the broken look on some colors. Um, we have Don saying, funny story, I clicked on the video and was watching for about five minutes and was wondering why in the world you kept repeating everything you said last week. Then I realized there was no live in the corner. Yep, I was watching last week's video. <laughs> That's pretty good. I, I do I do like how you you memorize exactly what we said because I didn't even remember what we did last week. It was part one of this. Hey, we have a script we have to follow, and we'll follow it to a T. <laughs> yeah, there's mine, a script. I mean, Mike, hold down. He says this is starting to sound like a telethon, and that's my tele. <laughs> I guess I have a telethon voice. I'm all over the place. I think I'm slap happy from digitizing all day. Just let me know. I'll commercial it up. You'll commercial it up. I'll commercial it up. I'll, I'll telethon it out just for Michael Downey. So, as you can see, I'm digitizing in elements that are kind of true to life as far as what's front to back. You got the tail behind the, the body. You got this front foot out front. You have the, the pocket that's, of course, going to be in, in closer perspective than the back foot. The arm's going to be back behind the, the chest once I get that finished and working my way up here. Right, Jeff? Yep. Why was he pink? He's tan. Because I always did shies in contrasting colors so I can see it over the artwork. I mean, you could just do one solid fill, Justin. I could. <laughs> but that's copying your style. I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. Hey, it doesn't bother me. I think it's funny. Hey, if, if you're not going to let that video die then I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna keep on reinforcing the joke <laughs> all right so we actually have a question yes uh, all jokes aside i guess suzanne said what is the red thing um and i think that uh i call it hot sauce but i think it's actually supposed to be a tomahawk a tomahawk with wings right Let or hot sauce. Extra spicy. <laughs> i don't know if i say that one. I really do like how you use oh column B so much. I've been using it a lot more lately. Okay. Since everyone is curious but me what this weird logo is, this is what it's supposed to be. 
It looks like a hot dog on a stick with wings. Got it. Hot dogs. Let me, let me see it again. Hold on. Okay. Tomahawk with wings. It drank Red Bull. Tomahawk on Red Bull. Yep. Sponsored by... No, I'm just kidding. We got a sponsor by Red Bull? <laughs> no, I wish. Yeah, so I, I think know. if needed, it could be blown up a little bit so it's bigger. And the bird could also, if wanted, but I know you just finished doing the bird, I think. Um, we can explore it once I measure it and see if how much detail and stuff I get in there. So I don't think we get this comment, Don saying, is that like a jalapeno on a stick? I know it's jalapeno, but. Uh, a jalapeno? <laughs> that's how you say it, right? Jalapeno? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a little bit too dark. Yes, yeah, so my computer is really having a hard time. Give me a color. Don't you know a color offhand that that's going to be there, Matt? Uh, I do not, but I can tell you which ones I do have. <laughs> well, give, He's like, give me a color one on the machine. Give me a color that's a uh, medium brown and something that's going to be the tan. Uh, uh, What's that? A uh, Madeira? Yes. 1987. Is it going to be the medium? Uh, something. 1987? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, 1885, maybe? And I was close. I picked 1884. All right, that works. That works. Uh, I also got 1729. Is that a lighter color? Uh, that's a, a darker slightly. No. Uh, if you no, want I a think... lighter. Yeah, give me a lighter one. Uh, do 1927. All right. I'll have to buy those anyways, but well, I guess I do have two of them. Thank you, Matthew. You are welcome. I got too many drawers of blues. So I just keep buying more and more blues, not realize, realizing that I have like all the shades already. Order. I might have to do a, a great purge of threads that I never use. They call that a D stash. It's totally a thing in some groups. A D stash? Yeah, where you sell off all your stash stuff. Oh, okay. It's more of a crafter type thing, I think. So what, but, you know, if you have what, a bunch of stuff, you're not going to get rid of. So what Quite do you, do? you 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 trade each other and just shift the stash from one person to the other? No, pretty much. Usually, it's like a money thing. So you just put it up for sale, and people buy your stash. I am all wonky today. I'm glad I'm not charging you for this one, Matt. I'm glad to. <laughs> I can't promise anything. I think I'm only supposed to make like 30 of them, but the last time I said I only had to make four of these, I ended up having to do like 60 of them. And it was yeah, not it. it was not digitized to run 60 of them. <laughs> Let's Isn't that the uh, the um, the tactic of of customers? Oh, how much is uh? Actually, yeah. I guess it's the yeah. Opposite. That's the how much is yeah. sixty of them? Oh yeah, give me two. It's like okay, here's the pricing for two. Oh, 
Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to cancel. Our way down here to his belly. Oh, and then we got a, a question or a statement from Eric saying he's always had the New Mexico problem, turquoise variation for days. Um, someone posted, I think, in the nerd discord. Uh, I think that's where I saw it. Um, of like all the different colors and everything and like what um an artist sees and it's like 27 different colors and what a normal person sees and it was like three colors or something seriously yeah i believe it since you guys told me you only saw one color kangaroo here <laughs> i'm i had to ask somebody to help me pick the color yellow today because i can't <laughs> When it, when it's shades of yellow, there's like three in my in my book. Then you get into the the debate of if it's, if it's considered yellow or gold or orange. <laughs> I was not blessed with that ability to see that color. I, I usually have my wife pick my threads for that very reason because she can see the difference between some that I can't. It's funny that um. Some of the names that Madeira uses for the thread when I go pick them out of the palette, and you're thinking it's something that's yellowy, and they call it like orange blossoms. So, uh, when we were um, in ISS um, Fort Worth, and uh, Sam from Madeira was there, he told us that they did like competitions where people could name colors. So that's where a lot of those weird colors came from. Oh, really? Dog getting in trouble? Um, okay, so I'm gonna bring up my screen. This is the picture I was talking about. Where it's like the artist sees all these different color names for colors, normal people, <laughs> like the the rainbow spectrum, and then I just happen to find one with a physicist because they're different. But so I just thought that I see one. three. And Eric says, "Roll call. Who else did, is digitizing as we speak?" I, I raised my hand too. Um, customers will ask for royal blue and then select anything from processed blue to fully great purple. I'm a purple guy. You're a purple guy? Yeah, that would be my... That needed purple shades. That I'm pretty so. sure that's purple. It's probably a blue. Uh, they call it galaxy blue, but it looks purple to me. Oops. What am I doing here? Oh, yeah, right there. The, it looks like the Viper sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike gets me. If Adam asks what a telethon is, just tell him it's a GoFundMe before the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and Suzanne, I remember the color naming contest, but they still had to select a reasonable name. I still use the numbers. And keeping up on the comments, at least. If you guys do have questions, make sure you drop them in there and we will pull them up. So you guys know like the, the Wordle game where you have to figure out the word of the day? Uh -huh. Yes, I thought of it. it would be kind of humorous to make like an embroidery thread one where it gives you like a color and you have to guess what number it is. But obviously it would have to be like this brand of the day is like this color or, or this brand and like it would give you a yellow and you'd have to be like, oh, I think that's lemon drop from Madeira. 
That'd be kind of funny. I'd be going to Matt's website for a church. That, click, pick from eyedropper. <laughs> I mean, there you go. Um, there's so, like I said, there's the Wordle. There's also like a bunch of different websites. So, like this one is framed.wtf. So it's a random still from a movie. So like I can put in uh, what I think it is. Uh, Titanic, even that's not even in there. Okay, we'll do Inception, even though it's definitely not. And you just try to guess what it is. Um, Shrek, that's not in there either. Oh, Star huh. Trek, there we go. That This is Star Trek, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> but, Let me uh, see. All right. It's definitely Matt, we'll, we'll pull it back up when Matt figures it out. So yeah, there's there's not much room to do too much detail in this tomahawk wing thing, so I'm just gonna do a pretty basic wing shape here. Maybe give them two different layers with some different stitch angles. Check my start and stops. So I don't think we've talked about this yet, but uh, next week is uh, 4th of July, isn't it? It is. So I'm guessing we probably aren't going to be doing a live. Uh, it's technically uh, on the 5th. The 5th of July is Tuesday. But I am down for not doing a live on the holiday weekend. I don't know. What do you guys think? We haven't really taken many days off. Like, I think I looked it up before, and we're on episode 66, 67, or 68 now. The, the numbers are being vetted. I would there vote. You. I would vote maybe a dark week. Only because I know all three of us are scrambling to finish some stuff for ag it's right after holiday so a lot of people i think will be in holiday mode and possibly even out of town so that's you know mind. what i think would make a great live for next week matt selling this out part three matt selling it out dun 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 maybe maybe we'll do a recording and make it a live recording but oh yeah we can do that we can hey, do that you know. so you got the camera oh, done. Done. Boom. I forgot this little star out here. And the part of the, the flag behind him. Or is it, did you do that? That? Oh, never mind. It, I didn't see that before. Disregard. I'm just special. <laughs> Disregard. So I think we have some text still to do. So we could do that as well. And no, I don't have a Ray. Jeff. <laughs> so I have to copy and paste the old way and rotate and copy and paste. So point and laugh. Hey, if you didn't know the elements on sale, Is that what Bob said all of them were? Mm, possibly. I forgot where the one. I yeah, generally don't check the price to your... if I'm looking to buy something. Neither or they send me an email. talking to your BFF there, Jeff. My BFF. Yeah. Teresa, my most favorite person of Will at Wilcom. Exactly. Where did, where was that posted? Was that in the, 
on the Discord and the digitizing tab, I think. Uh, yep, there it was. Pro creativity and productivity elements are normally $400 each. They're on sale, one for $225. That's pretty good. Three for $550 or six for 1000 That doesn't sound too bad. Um, specialty elements are half price, so that would include things like your... Uh, not chain stitch the, the Chanel totally Chanel like, font Chanel Chanel number five yep font creator number four and there's beatings and beatings sequin and I think there might be a sequin advance I'm gonna cheat and use the stock font there Matthew yeah that's fine So, we can use the fancy dancy tools to set um, densities. I, I the, probably would have just did a block font. Well, I'm trying to stay as close as possible to your to your design here, your design integrity. I ain't got any integrity. Changing the radius to try to figure out that arc. What do you think? That looks about right. I'd say that looks pretty darn snazzy. Text change the archetype. And make it a little bit wider. So spacing. I guess for trim purposes, I'm not going to space it anymore. And in between, and that, my friend, is your completed design. Woo! Cue the cheesy clapping background music and kids celebrating that wave. Um, you guys can clap if you want. That's a little loud with the microphone right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think. So are you going to keep the large star as a flat fill? In honor of Jeff, I'm going to keep it flat. <laughs> <laughs> if Matthew wants to change it, then then he can. Okay, so That's, yeah, I think I'll I'll run it out on some blue twill. I'll record it, and then uh, we'll just throw it up as a a live for next week. Uh, but it won't be actually live. So if you ask questions and we don't respond right away, that's probably why. It'll, oh, it's called the YouTube premiere. That's what it is. So it'll only be on YouTube. You can also do it through StreamYard. No, Jeff, we can only do it through YouTube. So you have to oh. watch it on YouTube. Apparently, we can't do it. I kicked you under the desk, can't you tell? Uh, except the dog is like licking your foot, probably. Oh, and now he's gone. Well, isn't this just a slap happy episode? It is. I think we're all just tired. I think that's a lot of it, is that we're all just tired. But I think we can go ahead and close it out unless you guys have anything, anything else you want to cover. Nope, if there's any other questions, which I don't think so. No, I don't see any other questions either. So we'll go ahead and close it just a little early. Um, push buttons there. So coming up, we have the applicant getaway in July. It's going to be the 13th, no, the 15th, 15th. and 17th. Um, and Justin will be teaching a class on 3D Puff. 
and more. Um, I'm just going to say and more. And Matt's going to be teaching a class on patches. And I will be doing one on hats as well as doing one with Adam and raising, called Raising Young Entrepreneur. Uh, other than that, we don't have, I don't think we have very much going on other than that. Um, that's, the, that's the immediate fire we're trying to put out. So we're going to get going on that. Uh, and if you guys want, you can go to the links.emvnerd.com where you can find more information about that. So with that, I, let me click on the button here. I can't see any of the comments. There we go. With that, uh, that is Jeff Narmento from JA Digitizing Studios. We've got Matt Enderly from Patch Graves, and I am Jeff Fuller from Florida Embroiderer Works. We're all here representing the Embroidery Nerd, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.